Olá, Deus te abençoe. Hello, God bless you. Thank God. Welcome to the Life Change Today program. Thank you so much for being there. And may God bless you in everything. Your home, your family, your day. May He give you strength, energy, and all the favor you need. And He gives trust in this and ask and don't fear anything because no weapon, no, no, no weapon forged against you will prevail. No weapon. No setup, no injustice, no trap, no evil scamming, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. You will silence all the voices you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. What is this heritage? It's authority. God gave you authority. Use this authority. God gave you authority. Use it. Use authority. And this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. Who does make our defense? The Lord. Who does make our defense? The Lord. So, I trust in Him. I depend on Him. I do my part. I use the authority he gave me. And the rest, he does my defense. He does what I can do. What you can't is get discouraged. Discouraged is to do this, what is written here. Look. Nahash the Ammonite and Nahash means serpent went up and besieged Jabesh Gilead and many times the evil comes this serpent and serpent serpent in the Bible means represents the devil and it besieges us surrounds us with problems with situations with temptations And all the men of Jabesh said to him, Make a treaty with us and we will be subject to you. Now, we read this. We can't believe in this. When you see, you think, Wait a minute. It wasn't Nahash who suggested it. These people surrendered, gave up. You know when you look to a situation and you don't see a way out anymore and now and then you try to to find a natural way totally out of God and covert covert make a treaty make a covenant how people who have God, as they are God, will make a covenant with a serpent, with evil. There is no treaty. First, first, because evil doesn't fulfill with treaties. The devil, they are instruments who are possessed by evil, by devil. They don't have words. They don't fear. And these people here, they were more afraid from the of the enemy than, than God, than from God, than trust in God. Make a treaty. They 
they were desperate when they look to that situation and they said make a treaty make a covenant when the enemy saw the weakness because that was absurdly unacceptable this weakness it's unacceptable for a person who walks with God if you walk with God it can't happen that's not how things work that's not a mind of a person who walks with God right someone who believed in Jesus and has his mentality his mind they will never think like this they will never act like this. So you see that these people were truly fallen. They were distant from God. But Nahash, the serpent, the Ammonite, replied, I will make a treaty with you only on the condition that I, that I gouge out the right eye of every one of you and so bring disgrace on all Israel. Clearly, he said, yes, I do it. There's no problem. The, my intention is to humiliate you. I can leave you to live, but on the condition that I will gouge out the right eye of you. I burn to steal your vision. And they were already ready to accept that the enemy will just steal their vision. They were about to accept becoming spiritually blind. Isn't it crazy? Huh? Yes. But we find people like this, like them, people who cower terribly who give in to evil, who make a treaty with evil, knowing that evil wants to humiliate them and they allow the enemy to steal their vision. And what is written? That the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they can see the light of the gospel the glory of the lord so you give place to this belief because look the size of this belief you give place to it what will attract to your life blindness is spiritual blindness you don't see a way out you don't see the glory of god you don't see it that's why there are people who are not seeing the glory of God. Because they gave place to disbelief and they allowed a terrible blindness took over them. Now the person, the person doesn't see a way out and they start to accept the worst. The, a treaty with the enemy, humiliation, blindness of all sizes. They accept it. They start to accept it. But where did it start? The problem. It was here? No. If these people were close to God, aligned with God, they would never act like this. We see that people from Jabesh Gilead were fallen. They were spiritually fallen. They were weak. They were distant from God. The elders of Jabesh said to him, Give us seven days so we can send messengers throughout Israel. If no one comes to rescue us, we will surrender to you. It means the help has to come from outside. It doesn't come from God. Instead of they stopping and seeking God, they need to they needed to stop and say we're going to seek God. They couldn't even say something like this. No, we will 
wait for someone to rescue us, for someone to assume the responsibility that is ours, that someone will do for us. People, I said so much. Someone needs to do it for me. Someone will have to help me to rescue me. Otherwise, I'll have to accept the worst. No, God gave you the authority. To you. When the messengers came to Gibeah of Saul and re reported these terms to the people, they all wept aloud. What is the use of crying? I need to invoke God, to see God. I need to, to, to position myself with faith, to believe in Him. Just then, Saul was returning from the fields behind his oxen, and he asked, What is wrong with everyone? What is happening? Why are they weeping? Then they repeated to him what the man of Jabesh had said. When Saul heard their words, heard something like this, when Saul heard their words, when Saul heard their words, oh, if Saul had remained like this. There are people that if they had remained full of God, with the right spirit, mm, the spirit of God came powerfully upon him and he burned with anger when he heard that he, he didn't accept it. So the Spirit of God had place to take, to came powerfully upon him. And, and how did he manifest himself in Saul's life? He burned with anger. He burned with anger because it was unacceptable what Nahash was doing, what people from Jabesh Gilead were accepting. Look what the enemy wanted to do and look what God's people were accepting. The enemy wants to destroy us. He only steals, kills and destroys. And our role is not to let. You can't let. Let it. Don't let it. Don't let. Your position is to be always this. You won't do what you want. You won't steal me. You won't destroy me. You won't kill me. And I don't accept it. I don't accept it. I won't bow down. I... I won't lay down. I will fight with faith. We need to take possession of this furious spirit and go against the enemy. Silence the negative voices and face whatever is before you. If it came before you, you can, you can face and overcome it. He took a pair of oxen, cut them into pieces, and sent the pieces by messengers throughout Israel, proclaiming, This is what will be done to the oxen of anyone who, doesn't, who does not follow Saul and Samuel. Then the terror of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out together as one. You see that he had a, an aggressive attitude. He said, wait a minute, Israel will fight. Israel doesn't surrender, doesn't give up. No, we, not, we are God's people. We are champions. We are winners. We have God's name. Wrestles, wrestles with God, a winner with God. Princes of God. We have God's name and we won't ashamed God's name. And people, when they heard the message and they saw that he wasn't kidding. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If we are God's people, we're going to fight as God's people. Fight as God's people. And people went. And they went. 
When Saul mustered them at Bezek, the men of Israel numbered 300,000 and those of Judah 30,000. They told the messengers who had come, Say to the men of Jabesh Gilead, Gilead, by the time the sun is hot tomorrow, you will be rescued. Look at this. Look the word that Saul delivered. By the time the sun is hot tomorrow, in the lunch time, my, my son, when the sun is hot in the lunch time, the middle, midday, you'll be rescued. What a powerful word. What a word, right? When the messengers went and re reported this to the men of Jabesh, they were elated. They, they said to the Ammonites, Tomorrow we will surrender to you, and you can do to us whatever you like. The next day, Saul separated his men into three divisions. During the last watch of the night, they broke into the camp of the Ammonites and slaughtered them until the heat of the day. Look what happens with a person possessed with the Spirit of God. When some wanted to make a treaty, another ones were entering the camp of the enemy. When some were trying to make a treaty with the enemy, another ones were getting entering in the camp and is slaughtering the enemy. Are you seeing a person? Full of God, full of the Spirit of God, they will never make a treaty with the enemy. They will never accept what the enemy wants to impose in their life, wants to give to them. No, you won't steal me. You won't destroy me. No, I won't accept this diagnosis, this sentence. I won't accept this problem the way it is. I won't. You won't take my family, my house, my health. You enter in the enemy field, enemy's field, in the territory of the enemy, in the, in the camp of the enemy with courage because you know that God is with you and you defeat them. It's here. The Ammonite, the serpent was defeated. In the, ne the next day, Saul separated his men into three divisions. During the last watch of the night, they broke into the camp of the Ammonites and slaughtered them until the heat of the day. Those who survived were scattered so that no two of them were left together. It's over. Is there the enemy? The enemy was self-assured. He was feeling confident. Oh, of course. God's people was co coward. But why did it finish like this? Because there was someone full of the Spirit of God. Full of the Spirit of God. And, and what, what do we see? A furious spirit against that enemy. Be furious against devil, the devil. That's it. Be full of the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I am sure that he will raise you up as he raised Saul to do something great. But never be coward. Be afraid and make a treaty and give up. Never, God's people, don't lay down to the enemy. Don't make treaty with the enemy. Don't allow that the enemy prevail. No, God's people prevail. Be full, be filled with the power of God. Face let this furious spirit against the problem take hold of you. Not a spirit of fear, but fury against the problem. Yes, look at this problem. This way. Fury, you won't achieve the 
the purpose you determined. You won't have what you want. I won't lay down. I won't give in. You won't. I won't let it happen. I always tell you that I used to look to diagnosis that arrived related to Murilo's health with fury. I didn't accept it. You won't stay in my son's life. How many times I said epilepsy, you won't prevail, keep remain my son's life. You won't do what you want to do with my son. I remember once when I, I read that that scripture about the boy convulsing and what the devil had been doing with him since his childhood. And I used to scream, and that's true. You won't do with my son what you did with, with him. You won't do. It's you who is there, and you will get out in Jesus' name. I won't prostrate myself. I didn't accept it. What I heard the most, it was for me to make a treaty with the enemy. Accept it and accept it. No, I won't accept it. I won't accept it. And I didn't accept it. And there is a result. No, we need is to allow the Spirit of the Lord to take possession over us, take possession, take over us, be filled with the Holy Spirit because it's by the Spirit. Look at this problem this way. As Saul looked at Nahash with a furious spirit, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him and he was furious. It's a furious spirit from God against the problem. And what was the result? In the hottest time of the day, that was ended. You see that a person filled with the Spirit of God, they will never talk about a sap to make treaties, but they enter in the camp of the enemy. They enter in the territory of the enemy. They enter in the camp. That's what happened. They entered in the camp and they slaughtered with that problem. God has victory for you. Get up with strength, with courage, with confidence. You have authority. Go. And don't be afraid of entering in the camp of the enemy because God has the victory for you. Never accept what the devil, what evil wants to impose over you, but take possession of your victory and fight with the right weapons, with the most powerful weapon that exists, that is the Word of God, the faith in the Word of God. Wonderful, wonderful. I believe in victory. I believe that you have already understood. I believe that you have already gotten up. And your decision to enter in the camp of the enemy and to defeat, definitely defeat them it and leave everything that God has for your life. He determined for you because he didn't defeat the worst. No, your destiny is not to be humiliated and have your right eye gouged out. It means have your eyes ruined, have your life ruined, deformed, unshaped. Your destiny is not to be st stolen stolen, destroyed. No, it's victory. The Bible says that over all things we are more than victorious. I came so that you may have life and an abundant life. So what God has for you is victory. Be filled with God. Believe in the word and go. Because It's victory that God has for you. Don't give in to anything. Maybe there is a lot of pressure for you to give up and you won't give in. 
on the contrary, you will defeat it definitely forever. In Jesus' name. If you believe, desire, and want to pray with me, prepare something you want to receive prayer for. I'll be right back to pray with you. Senhor, meu Deus. Lord, my God and my Father, I pray for the dear light that is with me. And the Lord has set apart the godly for Himself. The Lord hears when they call to Him. May this word have transformed their vision, their perspective. May they take possession of a spirit of courage and may they move forward really in a bold, courageous way because the righteous is courageous like a lion. May they don't fear because you're assuring a result, an end, a victory, of glory, a happy ending, never, never an end of defeat of shame you didn't plan for them defeat shame but victory all they have to do is to believe and get up and move forward in faith take steps of faith do what is within their reach and you will do the rest i know that what you have is victory for them and may they are surrounded there is something around and they started to fear and to think that the best would be to give in to start to surrender to it and you're saying no you won't give in you won't accept it you will fight and i will give you victory bless homes families all who sent their prayer request i consecrate everything and i take possession of a new time of these definitions i take possession of the end of this problem of this nahash this serpent of this situation that haunts that make them afraid today I take possession with them of this definitive victory forever may this evil fall may they receive strength in jesus name may they move forward courageously ruled by you lord because a person who is ruled by you holy spirit will never bow down before an obstacle before an enemy may they believe because the victory was already given all they have to do is to fight with faith and they will get out of this victorious bless my friends and fellow sowers i prophesy the gift of wealth prosperity and anointing of conquest and anointing of 10 times more raise more sowers because we need them and wherever this program is reaching may this strength life energy courage have taken over these people may their vision have changed may they have been encouraged strengthened may they have been seeing everything in a totally different way with the eyes of faith may they have received the word taken hold of it and may they have gotten up to do what is needed move forward and and overcome it because they will have victory praise be your name for everything i ask for your blessing i give my blessing and i thank you amen 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 thank god the life helpline phone number is 55 11 32 986 984 49 we're located at 995 taquari street in sao paulo brazil it's where we are today from house during all the morning Tomorrow, the God who heals service in all our temples. Sunday, the Lord's Communion, the consecration of tithers, the fast for the maintenance of my conquest projects. It will be an amazing day. Count on us. It is a pleasure to serve. And if the Lord Jesus doesn't come back, I will continue here.
talking about life and life change. Have a nice day. Amen.